Hello and welcome to this month's RC Race here once again we're in the middle of nowhere in the middle of England for the Neo Invitational here in Telford in the world's largest cattle ship. What, 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 oh. Yes Nick, this is our fourth time that we've been here and we caught up with the organiser Phil Morstan. Uh, excuse me, I show? Honestly! <laughs> an event like this time? Uh, well, first of all, deciding uh, whether to do it, that sort of happens over the summer. And then uh, come November, December time, we open the entry and plan everything down to sort of the times each heat's going to start on every single day. Would you say that you've had more people attend this year than at first? Or? Yeah, uh, last year we had about 180 uh, buggies. And this year we have about 220. The race was fully booked within 24 hours of opening entry. And we had about in total 300 entries, which is really positive in, in these sort of times. What's your name and where are you from? Ricky Burnett from London, UK. Uh, I came from Italy. I'm from Germany. Yeah, I'm from Italy. Frederick Selberg, Sweden. I'm from France. And I live in Australia, but yeah, it's very good because it's the first time I come to England for this race. and. Uh, I'm pretty impressed because the level is very high, all the good drivers in the world, the best ones are here, so it's very good. We've been here a number of years, a couple of years, three, four years, it's always very good, very professional, good drivers. The best thing uh, in, uh, since we came here is when you enter the hall. <laughs> Thanks very much. The oh, it's been brilliant, the track has been awesome, we're not used to these sort of jumps and stuff, the surface amazing. Facility, seeing all the top drivers racing with the best of the best is fantastic. And what's the favourite part of the track for you this year? Ah, it's a big jump. We like big jump. And how about you? Yeah, it's the same. This year for me. How about <laughs> and how's your sandwich? What? How's your sandwich? Oh, it's beautiful. We, it is the third year that we came here at the New Buggy Race and it's always an event. <laughs> a really good event, really good circuit and I enjoy myself. Uh, I'm with. Yes, it's, uh, very yeah. good. it's very good, it's very, very good. Yeah. You like very much yeah. back on egg, back on egg. <laughs> always. Darren Bloomfield, we saw a huge amount of you last year on the show, but we never got to talk to you. You, you, again, you qualify well here. You must like this sort of event, the Neo on the, on the dirt. Yeah, I really like the uh, quite sort of stadium tra stadium like track. Um, I've had a few problems this year with uh, servos that I think a lot of people have. Um, I also had a tank, uh, tank split, um, so I missed two rounds of the qualifying, which put me under a bit of pressure for, for getting the four to count. The track is quite different, isn't it? There's a, lot, there's a, a, a large section which is very flat, which right. obviously you being a, a touring car driver should like. Right. Um, there's some spots like uh, on route, but it's pretty much flat, but already getting a little bumpy. So um, actually not anymore for on road. Well, as world champion in both off and on road, at Sushi should know. But what do the other Neo Buggy star drivers make of this year's track? I, I think in years past, you pretty much just set your car up just for the jumps. Um, the turns you didn't worry about so much, but the balance of this track, I think is much better for racing as, than in years past, just because you have the jumps to worry about, but you also have the high speed technical section. I, mean, I like the flat sections. I, I, I drive in quite hard. Um, and this year, actually, the flat section is pretty flat. Um, usually at Neobuggy, there's kind of a, a sort of pittery pattery surface, um, which was always helping my sort of heat into the corner because I carry quite a lot of corner speed in. I'm quite hot headed in, so I need the car to brake mid corner. Just your braking points are very, very critical, especially when you're racing with one another. If you come into the turn a little bit too fast, you end up late apexing the turn, which then sets you up late for the next turn. So the, the braking through this section is very, very critical. Well, whilst this is one of the biggest buggy races in Europe, it's often been dominated by Americans. And a few names seem to come up time and time again. So Adam Drake uh, ended up TQ. He put, uh, he put a really good run together in the last round. Uh, he's won here twice before, so I think it would be uh, foolish not to pick Adam because, I mean, he's seen, his driving style seems to suit this track really good. But, uh, I mean, there are so many fast drivers here. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy the whole track, but definitely kind of the American style is, is a lot of technical jumps. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun to be able to, uh, especially race side by side, jumping that far in the air. Coming to the final, I mean, 
once again, we're, we're talking about Adam Drake again. I mean, he comes here and he just seems to have the handle on this entire event. Yeah, I mean, Adam's pretty good on the dirt and the jumps, as he said. And, uh, I mean, his equipment is always up to scratch. And he's, always, he's normally always there or thereabouts. That's one of the things where I think the Americans have the advantage because we typically race on tracks with a lot bigger jumps. So the European drivers are able to jump very well, but the kind of car control in the air, um, they don't have as much experience, but they seem to be doing quite well. Well, let's see the track in action as the first semi-final gets underway and with your race commentary, it's John Hindhoff. So the top 15 in times, remember, goes through. It's really important to get a good start and that is exactly what Pullman Adam Drake has done. Bit of barging in second and third there between Martin Bear and Darren Bloomfield, but at the moment, it is Adam Drake. Adam Drake, he's pulled away through the touring car section, this flatter section over the far side of the circuit. And he has at the moment got the race under control. Drake then pulling away from the rest of the field. Just look how the buggies are sliding around through those raised areas on the corner. They're all off camber. It's one of my favourite spots of the circuit here as they come down. You've got to get the buggy settled and then straight on the power again. Drake then still leading the battle at the moment for the minor positions. And this is all good news for Adam Drake, the American on the low seat, because he is dictating his own pace. Remember, it is theoretically possible to have all 15 finalists from one semi-final. It's unlikely to happen, but it's not as if anybody's locked in. So it's not the top four plus. It is all done on time. And therefore, being at the head of the field and not tripping over people is tremendously important. Battle for second now. This is Jerome Arguan and Martin Bayer, who are battling for second and third. This is, again, a bit of a mistake there. You don't really want to be fighting at this stage. These guys really need to be a bit more sensible than this and just think about their time. Obviously, as soon as the hooter goes, the red mist descends. But they are... Oh, that's a lovely pass, though, isn't it? That's beautifully done by Higuain, the Frenchman on the Kyosho. Bayer just hanging on to him though in third place at the moment here's the action further back down the field and again everybody battling the clock here they know what needs to be done Drake's got away hasn't he in this battle from second th oh Bayer makes a mistake comes down short on the whoops there and tips the buggy over and that's going to cost him precious time just what I was saying earlier on now further down the field this is Ryan Lutz and Jan Newman USA versus Germany, Tamiya versus LRP. Alpha versus LRP engine for those two guys. And they at the moment are all about trying to make up a bit of time. Can't stress this enough. Yes, they are racing each other, but the clock is the enemy at the moment. And Adam Drake is setting a cracking pace at the head of the field. And that in some respects, as we see someone else make a mistake there, that in some respects is helping the other drivers because what we're getting here is a field that is relatively spread out and people are finding their own pace and not having to compromise too much by racing. And of course, as I say that, we immediately get a bit of racing going on through the touring car section here on the far side of the facility at Telford. Again, a perfect shot there of just how difficult it is to get the buggies balanced and get the power down through those difficult infield corners which are very heavily banked Ricardo Rabiti here and behind him and his wheel tracks Billy Easton the 11 and 12 buggies the Italian and the American and they're catching Ryan Lutz here that is Ryan Lutz and look he's right in amongst it there so that's Lutz, Rabiti and Easton all absolutely together through the touring car section and that is getting very slippery now great battling but again, it's costing them time. And you can see, when you start pushing harder, you're trying to attack or trying to defend, it clearly compromises the lines. So Adam Drake here, still leading from pole position. He's done a cracking job here. He'll be pleased with himself in this first of the semi-finals in the Neo 2010 event here at Telford. 
And as you can see, he has got a very, very comfortable lead indeed. Is he getting a little bit overconfident there? Really flying those whoops. And, and then having to get it slowed down there. Oh, great! Tokyo Drift Slide by Elliot Boots, that is, on the five buggy. That's the Mugen Sikai machine with the RB engine, the young Brit. And that is the kind of commitment to cornering we like to see. Fantastic stuff. So as we head through to the closing stages now, Adam Drake is leading as he has from the hooter. Yannick Agon has moved up from fourth into second place now. The second of the Igon brothers and he's now beginning to close down on the leader just a little bit and that is very close indeed as they go through the back markers seems to me as though Adam was a little more conservative there now he realizes he's got a race on his hands well goodness me he's been out there at the head of the field for so long well, hopefully he hasn't dozed off there as Yannick has a look round the outside now get the power down cross the line We've got a proper battle on here. Remember, it's the fastest 15 from the two semi-finals. Oh, I thought that Adam had just made a mistake there and come down on the side barrier. Yannick wants to win this. He's not happy just taking the time for second. Look at how he's pushing. Well, I'm not sure this is smart tactics from either of them. Placings, of course, not counting for anything. It's all about the time. But there's a lot of pride involved in the paddock. Now, Adam's got himself back under control here, clearly. Must have been a bit of a shock to have had such a lead and then just seen that peg back there over a couple of laps when he was a, a little quiet through the traffic. But better that than ending up on his roof and out of the race. And Yannick has a problem there in second. Just mistimed the whoops. But you can see there that he is not prepared to give up chasing for the victory. Great air there by the leader, Adam Drake, who is now under a bit of pressure. Now, let's see what he's like. He's had it pretty much all his own way since the start of the race, but now he has got Yannick Igon, a Frenchman on the Lozzi. Same equipment as Drake, so there's... no oh dear, what are the marshals nearly getting in the way there as he went for the stricken... Oh, and a mistake by the leader! The leader has cracked under the pressure. Adam Drake has gone... Back wheels over front, spoiler over bumper there. And that has let the Frenchman through. And after all that time in the lead, Adam Drake must be kicking himself. He's recovered well and immediately tries to put pressure on the leader in this contact. He won't go through there. He's got to let Yannick pull away and has done. So they head on to the last lap. Traffic in the way, perhaps. Is there one more chance? Yannick Agoen has had the opportunity, taken it after the mistake by Adam Drake. And I think he's going to close this out now. Barring any major disaster for him. Half a lap to go. Adam Drake kicking himself. Yannick absolutely delighted through the whoops there's the checkered flag they come through oh adam just slightly getting out of shape but that was a back marker and there is the crucial moment when drake got it all wrong and lost the lead so here is the confirmation of the results of the a semi buggy yannick Algoin wins it but only just from adam drake in second his brother yannick's brother that is jerome in third place ricardo rabiti and billy easton coming up from 11th and 12th to fourth and fifth well, fantastic action there from the first semi-final and the second semi-final is coming up right after this break. And in fact, I need a break, so I'll see you after the break. Zip. Oh, Ooh, that shouldn't look like that. Ooh. Ooh. 